Ibu. What's the second loudest land animal in the world? No, it's not my mom's side of the family in a family gathering, although that is close competition. The correct answer and my drone's brief encounter with this animal at the end of this video. So keep watching. You see, every year I try to squeeze in a solo trip that promises discovery, forcing me to broaden my perspective. Think pilgrimage of the soul. This time, I chose to spend almost five days with the welcoming and loving Achuar tribe in the heart of Ecuador's Amazonian rainforest at Kapawi Eco Lodge, which is owned and operated by the local Achuar people. Accessible only by plane or boat, Kapawi Eco Lodge is located near the Ecuador-Peru border in the heart of Ecuador's most pristine rainforest. Okay, so it's cuatro. Sí. This remote region, called the Sacred Headwaters, is one of the most biodiverse places on Earth and is home to a number of indigenous nations, including the Achuar. By inviting guests to visit Kapawi Eco Lodge and connect with the rainforest, the Achuar are able to conserve their ancestral land and culture while promoting sustainable economic development within their communities. And more to come on that later. I will share the journey to the lodge and give you a resort tour, followed by the cost and what all is included in this mostly all-inclusive lodge. I'll also cover some tips and learnings along the way that I hope will help make your journey even more smoother. Oh, uh, this video is not sponsored as usual. These are my genuine, unfiltered thoughts. This is one of those places that resets you, allowing you to realize how insignificant your life's problems are. And you'll see why I said that. So let's get to the next section, yeah? Getting to Kapawi Eco Lodge is like embarking on an epic quest. Mine is the dragons, but with chances to see dolphins, caimans, monkeys, and more. It's an excursion of its own. Although I will be covering the actual excursions included in my raid at a later point in this video. I flew into Quito from Dallas, spent the day exploring the vibrant streets, and then did a food tour with a local guide named Natalia where I got to try a local delicacy known as Kui, AKA the guinea pig. The following afternoon, I Ubered to Banos from Quito, which was about a three hour journey. And once I got to Banos, I stayed at Selena Hostel, paying less than $50 for a private room with a breezy view right in the center of town where I could listen to the sound of a distant waterfall. Amazing views. And then I spent the entire evening and night just gallivanting around the vibrant city trying different beverages and different foods. Uh, yeah, the michelada, you might want to ask how it is. It's okay, it's decent. I think uh, the michelada that I've had in Mexico are far, far better. Uh, those come with a lot more ingredients that come together really, really well. This is simply just, I saw her make it. It's lime, hot sauce, and salt. That's about it. So, keep it basic. It's good. I can nurse it for a little while and then I'm probably just gonna move out to cocktails. Okay, bye. After roaming around the beautiful town of Banos in the evening, a Kapawi arranged car took me to Shell Airport the following morning. The drive offered stunning views and Ecuador is truly beautiful, I tell you. From Shell Airport, a tiny chartered plane whisked me away on a 50 minute flight to Kusutka, one of the three Achuar villages that own and run the lodge. Just got here at the service facility. I believe we'll be boarding from here. And uh, they just got done checking my weight, my backpack's weight. So here's what the situation is. And uh, looks like they're directly correlated with Kapawi. That's our stuff that's going back to the resort. The organization and the arrangement has been pretty spot on. Let's go, newly married couple. Woo! <laughs> we flew over the Grand Amazon River, weaving through clouds and staring down at the labyrinth jungle, finally landing on a tiny dirt road turned airstrip. We unloaded our luggage along with some groceries requested by the chef at the lodge and headed to the lodge 
on a 20-minute boat ride along the Kapawari River, almost at the crossing of the Pastasa River. As we got closer to the lodge, we saw that on the dock, which became my second home during my stay, some members of the Achuar tribe, also the lodge employees, greeted us. They unloaded our luggage and took us on a tour of their lodge. So now we use this cabin to do the Wayusa ceremony. Okay, so these are the solar panel above us. As you know, we are an eco lodge, so all the energy is generated by these solar panels. The heart of the lodge is the gathering hut. This lobby area is designed to blend harmoniously with its natural surroundings, offering an inviting and serene atmosphere. Constructed with sustainable materials, the space features high thatch ceilings and open sides to maximize natural light and ventilation and great sound, by the way. It's almost like you're sitting in a movie theater watching National Geographic videos. The decor also incorporates local Achuar handicrafts and traditional art, some for purchase, by the way. A comfortable seating area is also provided with plush cushions and wooden furniture to put down your plate or coffee or drink. And it just provides a very relaxing space for guests to unwind, socialize, chill, chat, or just be quiet and enjoy the stunning views of the rainforest. I personally loved hanging out in the gathering hut. It was a great communal space for us to share family-style meals with the guides and other guests. Fantastic for happy hours, post-adventure lounging, reading, and adventure planning with the guide for later on in the day or the next day. And to the left is the kitchen, where the staff blows on a conch shell to announce meals, which can be heard all the way from your room. Reminder, there are no restaurants on site. The kitchen serves breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's a changing menu, but it's a preset menu, and it's a three-course meal, which will include appetizer, entree, and a dessert. During my stay, our chef, great guy by the way, prepared a variety of entrees, including local Achua recipes. One night, he even prepared piranhas that we caught on a fishing trip. A fishing trip that I had requested, and by we caught piranhas, I mean my pals and other guests, and the guide caught piranhas. I didn't catch Jack. There's also a bar with the coolest bartender of all time. And to the right of the lobby is a yoga and meditation room with plenty of open space, comfy chairs, and more books to read. And in front is a wetland sanctuary with a pond filled and surrounded by wildlife, providing a nature soundtrack that changes tunes throughout the day. On certain evenings, the space transforms into a photo frame with the most amazing purple hues I've ever seen. See for yourself. There is no need for music. Nature's own orchestra changes notes and moods throughout the day. I spent more time here than in my room, and my room was pretty incredible. Perfect segue to talk about the room, yeah? Kapawi Eco Lodge has 10 bungalows, and each bungalow is a testament to the exquisite craftsmanship of the Achuar people. It's designed with traditional architecture and meticulously constructed by the local community. Each bungalow offers relaxation with a fantastic and well-placed hammock outside staring at the view. It's perfect for unwinding amidst the jungle serenity, and you might be tired after an excursion and you just wanna chill or rest. Outside, you're also going to find other thoughtful touches, such as a spot for hanging boots and wet raincoats outside. They've really done things to ensure the guest experience is optimal. Adieu, let's go into the room. Here we go. We've got one bed with mosquito nets. Two and three. Straw and wood construction. So it smells amazing. It smells very earthy, very woody. Stuff to organize and hang stuff. Generally, people are here for four or five days. I know the shortest tour might be three days. Uh, filtered water for us to drink. Do not drink the tap water, as Ricardo said. And surprisingly, very modern bathrooms, providing unexpected uh, toilet seat comfort in the heart of the Amazon jungle. Now heads up, there are no lockers in the room. However, I can personally assure you that I left plenty of valuables in the room, cash, passport, expensive electronics and equipment, and I found everything where I left it. It's not like I had any doubts that things would go missing in the Achua community. It's just a natural withdrawal symptom one would have after parting ways from valuable possessions such as a passport or an expensive drone in a foreign land under no lock and key. But everything was there and I'm thankful and I'm grateful. Apart from the five to six hours of sleep cocooned within mosquito netting, I spent most of my time in two other places. 
the shower where yes, there is hot water that felt incredible after sweating all day in the jungle. And then the second spot was my room's hammock facing the tranquil wetland sanctuary. Sometimes with a glass of 1800 tequila before an excursion, not recommended, and definitely after the excursion. Other things around the lodge, here we go. The lodge also features a hearth hut parallel to the Kapawari River, also holding another hammock as well as a fire pit, offering space for Achuar Wayusa tea ceremonies focused on dream discussions or detox sessions. Every morning, the Achuar hosts a Wayus tea ceremony held at the hearth hut next to the main dock where we arrived. Wayus time is traditional activity in an Achuar household, taking place before dawn, usually starting around 4.30 a.m. This moment is special for the Achuar since it is a family moment to share dreams plan the day's activities, or just to have a conversation about life or important issues. If you'd like to join one of these, let the staff know well in advance and you can partake in the YUST ceremony. There's also a staff office available for those needing Wi-Fi. It's not reliable and I'm so glad it was not reliable because it gave me a chance to disconnect and I didn't want to even bother signing on. I probably used it once every two or three days to let my family know that I am alive and well. Anyway, some of you are probably relieved to hear this, but you may not hear from me as often anymore because the internet is very, very choppy here. The resort does not have internet. Um, only the office does. And I don't think I'm going to visit the office just to come post. Moreover, the lodge provides an entry and exit dock on the river, allowing guests to swim and relax at their leisure. According to the tribesmen, anacondas, piranhas, and caimans tend to leave the humans alone, which was a good enough signal for me to jump in. And so I did. Countless hours were spent here, swimming, waving to passersby, and getting lost in the mind-numbing sunsets. The service, the cost, and what is included. So let's start here. During my short stay, the tribe's people treated me like family, ensuring my comfort with kindness and attention. We shared stories, laughs, meals, and drinks, and as I bid farewell, a tribesman gifted me a jaguar pendant. Let me go get it, hang on. This thing here, by the way, uh, saying that this could be my my spirit animal. Beautifully made and a beautiful gesture. Service for me, five out of five, without a doubt. Heck, I would give them six, seven out of five if I could. For my five-ish day package, the total for me was about 1,700 bucks, which covered lodging, meals, alcoholic beverages are not included, by the way. This also included private transfers and most excursions, except one where I paid a little extra to spend a night at a shaman's village. Okay, on to the excursions. So, I spent a night with a shaman. And that doesn't sound right. Let me rephrase. The Wachirpa village chief, who also happens to be the shaman, let me spend a night in his village. This was part of Kapawi's cultural immersion experience. Okay, let's track back real quick for the bigger picture so you know what you're getting yourself into. Kapawi Eco Lodge breaks their experiences into four categories. First, river exploration. The Amazon River is one of the largest rivers in the world, and it is the largest drainage system in terms of volume and flow. River explorations at Kapawi take place in the Pastaza, Capuari, Kusutkau, and Ishpingo rivers, all intricately webbed together in the Ecuadorian Amazon. You are free to swim right off the dock where I spent all of my evenings. Now, I know you're thinking I'm mad to swim in these waters, but the locals assured me that I'm good and they gave me a green light and said the humans are going to be okay and nothing has happened to them. A lot of these guys are born and raised there and no bad experiences. So that's good enough a signal for me to dive in. For a more connected experience, you can go kayaking with a cooler of beers packed by the lodge's bartender. I told you he's the best, isn't he? It's an easy and stunning trip, perfect for paddling and pondering life choices. There are also plenty of boating opportunities. You can ask your guide to take you on a river boat ride almost every day to catch the sunset or go bird watching. And you're probably gonna come across monkeys, very friendly butterflies, uh, bats, all sorts of animals, and even uh, pink dolphins, if you're lucky. If you are feeling adventurous, food-wise or otherwise, try piranha fishing. Your Achuar guide will be happy to show you secret spots and local tips. My pals on the boat, not me, caught a few piranhas using grooved pieces of wood juicy earthworms, sliced raw beef, and surprisingly hot dogs. You see, piranhas are very opportunistic hunters and they will eat the tip of your finger if you let them. We then had the lodge's chef prepare these piranhas for us, Achuar style, a core memory from the trip. That's awesome.
proud of your catch? Mm, I'm very proud. Very proud. <laughs> <laughs> is your first time eating piranha? Yeah, it's my first time. And how does it taste? Tastes good. I cut all the bones on this one. For wellness, guests have access to peaceful and silent communal spaces for yoga and meditation. The lodge hosts yoga retreats, workshop, and classes at different times throughout the year. Meditation and yoga have been part of numerous societies for thousands of years, but leave it to our fad-loving humankind to bring it mainstream. The Atuar, however, have always believed in the power of meditation to bring clarity and focus to one's life. My favorite spot in the lodge for some solitude was a spot I mentioned earlier, which was the pond, the waterfront next to the lobby, where the sky would just turn purple, the wildlife would crank up their music by a few decibels, and it was just a perfect backdrop for some peaceful introspection. Hiking. Kapawi's 20 kilometer trail system offers a variety of hikes, ranging from leisurely strolls to challenging treks. Your guide will lead daily excursions to help you experience and connect with the Amazon's incredible biodiversity. All guides are members of the neighboring Achuar communities and have grown up navigating these trails. The Achuar trek for days to visit other communities, harvest medicinal plants, or find sacred trees for ceremonies. They believe that these journeys into nature bring clarity and confidence to one's vision and focus in life. For me, these nature walks, or just time in nature, generally speaking, help me shed away what's unimportant in life. You know, like reducing the number of attachments that I have. In these walks, the Achuar will also teach you how they see the forest as a pharmacy, even providing natural mosquito repellent or a comb. As indigenous naturalists, the guides have an uncanny ability to locate animals, birds, and insects, sharing their deep knowledge of their wildlife neighbors. It's got all the textures of the leaf. Yeah. This <laughs> plant. Dentro hay como una semilla, como paquete. Entonces ellos secaban su casa. So it's safe to say that the forest just is in their backyard. It's their spa, pharmacy, and supermarket too. And now cultural immersion and my night with the shaman, which sounds like a very creepy movie, but I'm going to move on. Kapawi, owned and operated by the Achuar Indigenous Nation, offers guests numerous opportunities to engage with the Achuar community and experience life firsthand. Visitors can immerse themselves in Achuar life, participate in ceremonies, and learn from community leaders. My cultural immersion experience unfolded like this. I visited the Wachirpa village for an afternoon, engaging in dialogue with the shaman, who happens to be the village chief, with the help of translators. We discussed life's challenges, shared stories, and delved into medicinal plants. Intrigued by something I may have mentioned, the shaman invited me to spend the night in his village the following evening and to fast until I returned. When I came back, he had prepared a holistic medicinal brew over six hours that tasted somewhat like coffee. The night in the village with the shaman and his family sleeping on a road bed and then in a tent was truly surreal. It felt like I spent the night giving myself a personal voiceover about my own life, recounting and praising both my triumphs, challenges, and traumas. I also received very few tips on how to approach the future remaining fully conscious and attentive throughout this introspective journey. I finally woke up before dawn to the tribesmen performing their Wayu's tea ceremony. Shortly after, the sun rose, the rooster sang, and the village children started waking up. It was time to head back to Kapawi Eco Lodge. This activity was not included in Kapawi's package, but it was the best 50 bucks I spent in a very, very long time. Tips and lessons I learned that I would love to share with you and you won't find these anywhere else. Here we go. Bring lots of mosquito spray. Bring easy to dry clothes and footwear, including socks. If you like to get your drink on, bring a bottle or two. Bring two headlamps. Do not book close flights back home. I ended up hanging back at Kapawi Eco Lodge on my very last day for an extra four hours due to terrible weather. So uh, I'm just so glad I had cushion room and my travel plans were not affected one bit. Make sure to list all your allergies on the intake form before you sign up for Kapawi. Uh, bring binoculars, a good power bank. Bring cash, remember, Ecuador's currency is the US dollar. Surprising, isn't it? So yeah, bring US dollars for buying handicrafts. If you decide to spend a night at a shaman's place, just like I did, you may want to give him cash too. Tips, overnight stays, you know, whatnot. Bring hydrocortisone cream, band-aids, and Tylenol, and a uh, book or two of your choice because there will be lots of downtime. And if you are completely addicted to your phone and cannot step away, then download some content on your device. Okay, final thoughts, here we go. Kapawi Lodge's serene environment became a metaphorical dance floor where individuals like myself learn not only to synchronize their movements with the elusive partner that is their shadow, 
but also to take the lead in the dance of self-discovery. Nestled along the banks of the Pastaza River in the Ecuadorian Amazon, Capawi Lodge stands as a model of sustainable tourism and cultural preservation. Its eco-friendly design harmonizes luxury with environmental responsibility, using solar energy and rainwater harvesting. Beyond the lush surroundings, Kapawi also offers a unique opportunity to engage with the indigenous Achuar people, fostering cultural exchange and understanding. What sets the lodge apart is its commitment to community impact. All proceeds from the lodge go directly to the Achuar and nearby tribes, supporting their sustainable development initiatives. I chose Kapawi not only to dance with my shadow, but also to contribute to the preservation of indigenous cultures and the conservation of this extraordinary ecosystem. Oh, and it's the howler monkey that is the second loudest land animal in the world. And a family of them was residing in the tree branches across the lodge while I was there. An incredible sight. And like I say every time, you could be anywhere else, but you're here with me and I'm truly grateful for your presence. So thank you for being here and I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I'll see you soon.